Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Tri-State Cadillac Baseball Night in New York Living Room Edition show. Doug Williams alongside Todd Zeal and Anthony Recker. And guys, we're obviously talking about the news that broke yesterday afternoon. Noah Syndergaard needs Tommy John surgery. And Anthony, you know, it's 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 not been long since you were in a big league spring training. So you're you are used to the normal course of action of getting ready for a big league season. Noah Syndergaard is a guy who last year was very in his own head about his mechanics. This year showed up to spring training, confident as ever, ready to put that behind him. How big of a blow mentally, uh, forget physically, do you think this is for him right now? Uh, for him specifically, I mean, it's it's going to be tough to overcome, you know, because just because of the timing of it, he's not just going to be missing, you know, this season and whatever remains of this season after all this is over. But there's a good potential it's going to go into next year. And then there was a good article, actually, I think, uh, I don't remember if it was Andy Martino or John Harper. There were a couple on, on SNY speaking on, uh, you know, the, the mental and what it's going to take to get over the hump when he comes back, because post all of the rehabilitation that he's going to have to go through, he's going to be staring at a a potentially a half a season to hopefully a little bit more than that of a season, um, you know, right after rehab. So it's going to be a mental grind for him for a good 24 months, uh, you know, starting right about right now. And and that's, that's, that's a tough process to have to go through. And then, you know, and, and not just physically, but mentally and to have to prepare himself for that, that's going to take a lot. And Todd, you were in the booth for a couple of his games in the spring. I mean, how did he look to you? And what were your expectations for him going into this year before you heard the news yesterday? Uh, I thought it was really interesting because after his first start, um, I think we even talked about it, Doug. He talked about some very, very specific things that he thought worked well. He thought he had good command of his slider. He talked about his release point. And by no means did he ever give any indication that there was any pain or discomfort. Um, and then I saw him again and he struck out five over three innings. He looked good as his slider had a lot of sharp downward break. Um, I had noticed that his velocity was between 95 and 98. He wasn't really, um, getting to 99 to hundred, but at that time of the year, you wouldn't expect that anyway. And I also noted during the game that it looked like he was intentionally taking a little bit off that slider to get that downward bite. And it was more effective. He got four or five of the strikeouts on that pitch. So, there was no indication to me that he was holding anything back and that he wasn't throwing certain pitches or that this uh, was something that was lingering. So um, I was a bit surprised by it. I guess the good news, going to Anthony's point, it may take some time. The good news is that Tommy John surgery is about as routine as um, any surgery that there is in baseball for these guys, and the, the results – are much more positive than they were 10, 15, 20 years ago, even five years ago. So um, it's a grind, but I I expect him to come back at least physically ready to go. And then the mental part of it is going to be really where we see him um, have to mature and develop. What a fascinating and and frustrating career so far for Noah Syndergaard, because you mentioned the slider, Todd. How many times have we talked about each of his pitches and we get so specific with it? He fell in love with his two seam. It was he called it an artsy pitch. Then he wanted to be a four seam guy. Is he a strikeout pitcher? Is he not a strikeout pitcher? Should his slider be 92, 93 miles per hour, which is the pitcher's version of a first world problem? Then he wants to throw it less hard so that it has more movement. As Todd's talking about, we've spent so much time talking about uh, No Syndergaard perfecting his arsenal, which I think so many pitchers across baseball would switch theirs for his any day of the week. And now he's going to be on the shelf for a long time, which uh, I'm sorry for him. It's a bummer. Uh, It's fascinating to examine exactly what the contractual uh, results of this will end up being, considering he's not going to have much time to prove himself healthy before he's hitting the free agent market. Okay, let's move forward here. Uh, This is a Mets rotation that was looking at this guy as the number two. Now you would have to think, Todd, that Marcus Stroman slots up into that role what do you think the expectations should be for Marcus Stroman in a free agent year? I think they've got to be high. I think Stroman himself has wanted to, you know, put that, um, you know, that focus on himself as being a guy that should be top of a rotation guy. He was a top of a rotation guy in Toronto. He had great numbers there. He came across as a guy that uh, coming back to New York had to get through some of the um, coming back to hometown, trying to do too much, but, Um, Talk about a confident guy. He's ready to pitch. I've been watching his 
social media now because I'm a, a huge social media guy now, um, <laughs> as you know, Doug. Um, but, you know, he's always got something interesting to say, and it looks like he can't wait to get the season going. But he is a guy that has experience. He has confidence. And I think he's a great contrast to Jacob anyway as the second guy in the rotation. So, um, but yeah, he's going to definitely, I think, have to step it up and get where he's been saying that he wants to be instead of where he's been, or at least during the short time he's been with the Mets. Yeah, and we should uh, hear something because we're trying something new uh, on tonight's show. Michael Flynn, our producer, has, you know, the living room edition version of a full screen, which is the uh, 2020 projected rotation, which it appears he used either a marker or a crayon to make. And, um, you know, he's got his kids well, He's homeschooling, there. so yeah, it, he's it, homeschooling it might have been a, his, he might have had him do it as a project. That's actually they're getting extra credit right now. I wish I could say that, but I did myself. <laughs> yeah, you know, he and his wife Tiffany are homeschooling, so they, they just worked that into the, the routine. Um, Anthony, from the, the big league perspective, do you want to say, hey, Marcus Stroman, you're our number two? Or do the rest of the guys in that one through five, other than DeGrom, have the potential to be that guy? Do you just let this kind of figure itself out organically and whoever pitches the best is the number two? Yeah, I mean, obviously, when when opening day comes and, and there's going to be a set rotation, we're going to find out who the Mets believe is their number two moving forward. Um, but all that can be fluid. All that can change depending on how many off days there are. If there's an all-star break, who knows what's going to happen? Um, you know, but I think what this really brings to light for the Mets is that, yeah, those five, they had those six guys that they weren't sure who was going to be the fifth starter. Maybe they were. But, uh, you know, it comes to light now that they're going to have a set five pretty much. Um, it, it, it works out for them, it, the Mets, in a way that they had a great bullpen to begin with, um, you know, assuming everyone would be healthy and stays healthy and maybe we have some bounce back years. Um, you've got the potential to have a really good bullpen. You've also got a guy in Seth Lugo in the bullpen who wants to be a starter anyway. Obviously, losing Noah Syndergaard is a big deal. I can reference back to 2015 when we lost Zach Wheeler, uh, you know, in spring training very similar timing, um, you know, and at the time we had big aspirations that year. Obviously, everything kind of ended up working out pretty well that year. I just want to um, say quickly, and I want to clip this off potentially for next off season when we're back in our lovely studios and everything is back <laughs> to normal. Um, hey, guys, stop freaking out about extra arms in the rotation. Stop talking about who's the one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah. These yeah. things figure themselves out. We seem to forget about it every offseason. We, we bite. We, we freak out. We try and figure out who deserves what role. A lot of times, injuries figure these things out for us. Um, so time now for the walk-off. Todd mentioned earlier on in our little broadcast here that he's gotten into social media. He called himself a huge social media guy. Now, that is kind of a joke because it was years, potentially even Honestly, close to decades since his last tweet, going back to just a couple months ago. Since then, he's been that Bruce Almighty meme, just tweeting like a madman. And yesterday, I'm sitting at home, got nothing else to do. I see a little, little, little notification pop up on my phone. Todd Zeal on Instagram, Todd. Welcome. Welcome to the 21st century, my friend. I joined the Instagram nation. You know, I thought it was appropriate that Gary... Has uh, has tweeted me, or I said I should say, added me on his Instagram with Duke a number of different times. So I figured that was an appropriate uh, first photo to go with. And Doug, I appreciate the first like. Way to go! You're uh, yeah, you're on top. I helped of it. Way you to out. go. And what's your handle, Todd? Just to give yourself some. I I think it's just Todd Zeal. I think I, you know what? That's a great question. I think it's just Todd Zeal S N Y. There you Look, go. The, My handle. The, you asked me. You're the bare like minimum was, uh, in terms of you know, a CB guy. I thought I was a, a trucker on a CB. Hey, what's your handle, Doug? Um, yeah, my my Instagram name I think is just Todd Zeal S N Y. So, and Anthony Recker, are you on Instagram? Just quickly, I am. Yes. Okay. Good. We're all Anthony we're all on Recker Instagram. Twenty, I think. All right, guys. Well, Todd, we appreciate it, Anthony, always as well. And uh, it's been another. Baseball Night New York Living Room Edition brought to you by your Tri-State Cadillac dealers. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you tomorrow.